In this video, we're going to discuss scaling historical architecture images in Blender. Um, this is a technique used to scale any kind of images that have a scale in Blender, so you can also use them for scaling archaeological site plans, for instance, or any other kind of source data that you want to use for your historical or archaeological 3D reconstructions. Let's get started with a fresh Blender file. You can select the lamp and the camera and delete those. Uh, we keep the cube for now, we hide it, we will use it later. So in the previous video I discussed two primary methods of getting images in uh, Blender. So uh, the first one was uh, import images as empty objects and the other one was import emptying as planes. I discussed the pros and cons of both in that video so I won't go into detail. Um, but to follow this video you will have to use the import images as planes add-on and that one needs to be activated if you haven't it done it already. So to activate it go to edit preferences and then search for uh, images and you will find this add-on deactivated if it's not activated. Uh, turn it on and uh, save your preferences and whenever it is active you can start importing. Going not into the details of importing images, I've discussed those in a previous video. Go to the folder and I'll make sure that it is already of a decent size over here and I will also make sure that it is lying on its back with facing upwards. So those selected, I import them. They are not visible, the texture are not visible, so I have to turn on textures over here and now our image is visible. So this kind of uh, architecture drawings, uh, this one is dated to some time in the 19th century, second half of the 19th century, often have scales written on them um, and these scales are important because these are used to scale this drawing one to one in blender and for that we are going to use the cube so we turn on the cube again and as you can see here uh, it is written in dutch it's a bit unclear but it says the scale is one centimeter for a meter so uh, this is a very simple scale. One centimeter is a meter in reality. So we have just have to make sure that we match this these 10 centimeters to 10 centimeters in uh, to 10 meters in the Blender uh, world. So how do we uh, how do we do this? Well, we make sure that um, we have this cube. We go to select the cube and we make sure it is uh, 10 meters on the x-axis make it also a little smaller on the other axis so um, it makes it maybe even smaller like five so like so all right uh, so the next step is i'm going to top orthographic view by hitting 7 on the numpad or, or click the Z over here and then we have to align the first part of this scale bar and by the way we can also use this one over here um, that is often printed or uh, or uh, placed during um, during uh, digitizing of this archival uh, architecture drawing so we now use the original one place it over here so this one is a little bit it's diverging a little bit so maybe it's better to simply use this one over here so we place the first part of the scale bar of the drawing of the scale bars drawing uh, aligned with the scale bar uh, in Blender, so this one, uh, and now we have to make sure that it scales up from this point to this point. And as you may remember, we will use this. You can use the 3D cursor for that because 
when I'm scaling a drawing like this, it will use the center point of this drawing um, or its median point. So what we have to make sure is that uh, we will scale from this point and we will use the 3D cursor to do that. So we uh, go first into select mode of the uh, edit mode of the of this uh, blender scale bar, so the, the former cube. Uh, I select one of the vertices over here and I hit uh, shift S and it makes that the this menu come up and then cursor to select it. So now the 3D cursor is at the point from which we will want to start scaling. So uh, we have to modify the transform pivot point. So it, it will be the 3D cursor. So now the 3D cursor will be used as an origin for the scaling. So as you can see, that does it works perfectly. So go over here and we scale it up until about here. And we scale it something like this. So now this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten centimeters matches ten meters in Blender. And we could give it a check. Oh, we there are no measurements in this drawing except for this one. Get a measuring tape and drag from here to there. 9.7 so it's not very accurate so we have uh, like about 30 centimeters of uh, deviation maybe a little less if we place this more accurately um, but that is uh, that's inherent to this kind of historical uh, drawings there may have been this this scale bar may not have been drawn perfectly uh, per, uh, yeah, perfectly 10 centimeters. There may be inaccuracies, and these inaccuracies can also occur in the drawings. So, there are other cases um, when there's no scale bar present on the drawing, uh, but uh, there are dimensions given on the drawing for, for walls and windows, etc. So in those cases, we can use those dimensions as the base for the scaling of the drawing. So um, you go, uh, we'll import another image to illustrate this. So for instance, this one, import it. I will hide the other one for now. So as you can see, there's no scale bar here. There is uh, a centimeter here. Um, but there is no scale indicated anywhere on this drawing. However, there are a lot of dimensions uh, given on this drawing. So uh, here you can see the windows, um, the different segments of the of the walls, the heights of the gable, etc. So we can use those as well. So what I will do is um, duplicate this cube. I use Chip D to duplicate it. And I will rotate. Okay, now we have to switch to median point. So it rotates around its own zero point. Rotate 90 degrees. R90 and we will have to make sure it matches one of these dimensions. So for instance, from here to here, it is two meters and five centimeters. So I will go into the properties over here and make sure this, this one is 2.05. So now I have this one and I place it over here. And now I have to make sure that it is, yes. So a little bit above the surface. So again, I match this with the first stripe over here. I will place it in the middle in this case. 
I will go into edit mode and select the vertex that I want the 3D cursor to move to. I hit shift S, cursor to select it. And what the first thing I do, because this line this doesn't align perfectly, so I select the drawing and I hit rotate. And now I have to switch back to the 3D cursor as a pivot point. I hit rotate and make this align perfectly. Then I have to scale it down. And... Uh, and rotate it a little bit more, something like this. So now this is exactly two meter five. Um, now we can check again whether that was an accurate. So from here to here it should be 192. So I'm satisfied. This is 192. Uh, one. So um, the drafts person was accurate as far as we can see. 120. Well, we can make it a little lower, 119. Yeah, uh, one centimeter deviation approximately. Um, that's uh, acceptable for this kind of uh, drawings. So this can now serve as a reference for modeling. However, because you have all the dimensions still uh, written on the drawings. Um, it's better to use the written dimensions when you start um, when you start creating uh, the windows and the walls, etc. Um, still, it is good to have a drawing like this as a general reference because it makes modeling a little easier, and also it will become it will be clear to anyone viewing the model file what. Uh, your sources for this historical reconstruction actually were and that is one of the most important reasons that we include these drawings in the model um, rather than just taking the measurements and copying them uh, towards uh, uh, to the model in Blender. So uh, this is how you scale uh, these drawings. In the next video I'm going to show how to um, cut these drawings up into different parts and to align and position them in 3D space.